Good afternoon, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. Today we're at property address 21875 Southwest Dakota Drive here in Tualatin. We're located down the crawl space. We're gonna go through a uh, three inch ABS clean out. We've actually got two of them down here, which is very convenient. And we're gonna check the overall condition, serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. We're gonna start out in three inch ABS pipe and water is running. We're gonna zero out right as we drop in. All right, so we're going from the clean out that's furthest away from the crawl hatch. A little bit straighter shot into the line here. We're gonna zero out here. We should run into some water flow up ahead. And the reason I'm going through this access point, um, it's very simple to follow this line out. If you're standing in the street facing the front of the home, just to the left of the front door, the house pops out considerably further than the rest of the home. Uh, so the line comes out only, there, in fact, there's the clean out right there tying in, about two feet in from that corner of the popped out part of the house. The part of the house that sticks out closest to the street. The ground there is just, it's like concrete. I mean, you about need a pickaxe to get through it. Anyhow, as far as this line goes thus far, immaculate, absolutely spotless clean. This is exactly how you want your sewer line to look right here. And that is made possible by and large by about one living habit, and that's not putting cooking oil and grease down your line. We've got a little stringy item sticking out of this pipe joint here. We're going to revisit that little guy on the way back out. It has the potential to be a root intrusion. We just transition there over to concrete pipe, six inch diameter. Sorry for the visual there. What I'm trying to avoid doing is running right through that and get my camera lens completely gunked up. And there's the main connection at about 82 feet. Anyway, we're going to go locate. Okay, we'll let the line drain out here. And then we're going to pull back and take a close look at that joint. You know, the, the hard part is it's so stinking small. It's hard to verify with certainty it's even a root. There's debris that goes down lines that can kind of mimic the look of a root, especially when it's a single little tiny hair like that. Um, and, and lots of stuff gets pot, gets caught in little spaces between pipe joints. So it's a hard one. We'll take a closer look as we come out. All right, located the camera head successfully. Line terminates on Southwest Dakota Drive. Line ends up making its way out. It ends up orienting. It gets fairly close to the right side edge of the driveway. That's as you face the house from the street. But it, it turns before getting to the driveway. Just approximating here a little bit. Probably crossing the curb three, four, five feet. Something like that to the right of the driveway. Uh, and last I checked, Twalton was still taking responsibility Um out here, I believe it's at the right of way. So those things can change from time to time. Cities can just decide one day that they're not responsible anymore. Um, but last time I checked, which was not that long ago, the city was taking responsibility at that point. The reason I say that is, is concrete pipe here. These transitions to concrete very typically take place at the right of way. Concrete pipe does not hold up quite as nicely over time um, as your plastic pipes will. It's got, a, it's got a more finite existence, uh, much more predictable way of wearing out than a lot of other pipe materials. So anyway, we're back here to this little guy. 
And th this is a hard one. I mean, it's a little stringy thing sticking out. For all I know, what it could be is the is the stem off from an apple that got that went down the disposal and got stuck at the pipe joint. That's that's what's hard about it. I can write it up as a possible route. Uh, there's not enough there, in my opinion, to jump straight to. Let's dig up the front yard and fix that. It's way too tiny. This is one of those you'd have to watch with over time to see if anything changes here. Um, I've, I've doing this for about 13 years now on camera, about 24 or 5,000 lines. I've, I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of roots. Um, other than being a little stringy thing sticking out of the pipe joint like that, there's just not a lot else to go off of here. You know, when I get a questionable one like this, when I'm also looking for other secondary signs, um, that the joints compromised, like you get groundwater staining dripping down the sidewalls of the pipe, dirt clods sticking out, things like that. The other thing I like to see, which roots very typically do, is a flare out at the end, generally into multiple little tips. This thing, I mean, it's got some coloration to it that's similar looking to a root. Um, there's just not enough here right now. If it is a root, it, it you know, I'm giving it a possibility. I'm, I'm not certain it's even a root though. You've got just enough spacing there between that pipe joint that anything food debris wise going down the line could get hung up in it. There's lots of things that go down um, washing machines uh, from your clothing that can get stuck in spots like this. Uh, I don't know if the storm systems are tied in here or not, but pine needles, if they get down the storm system into the sewer line, um, that can also cause it too. So I'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled for tie-ins as we come back in for the storm system, but that's a hard one right there. I'm going to at least go locate it and see where it's at here. All right, so now that I've gone and located this thing, now I'm now I'm starting to lean pretty heavily towards it's probably a root intrusion. This is what I am going to recommend a fix on. We're sitting, the line goes directly underneath. There's a, I believe it's a Japanese maple. It, they're, they're almost, there's two trees that are almost straight out from the front door. It's the larger of the two. And it's a very awkward spot to locate. I'm up underneath the tree. If I locate oriented facing the house, I'm getting around six and a half feet deep. Typically, I like to locate with the direction the camera is moving. And in that orientation, I'm getting around five feet. That's typically the more accurate locate. But you're between five and six feet deep here, approximately. But I would relocate if you, you know, get the tree out of the way. But the being that it, we're, what we're, where we're sitting at is right in front of that, that maple. I mean, just a couple feet out from it, the line goes smack dab underneath the thing. So when you put all those things together, uh, that that's looking like a root intrusion. The color of it looks like a root. It's the smallness of that little guy there that makes it harder to tell. But when you combine it with the fact that the line is, is almost directly underneath that tree there at that point, that tells me that the that most most likely you've got a root intrusion there. <clears throat> you know, and going back to how clean this line is. I start to wonder if maybe this thing's getting clean periodically um, to cut the roots back. It is an incredibly clean sewer line. Not that some houses don't live this clean, but it's very uncommon. There's usually something, even households that are very anal about not putting grease down the line, cooking oil, stuff like that. You just, you know, typically are expecting to see a little bit more, but there are those homes out there that live that darn clean. So it's a hard one to say. But as far as that goes there, that <clears throat> that's looking like it's probably a root. As it sits right now, not affecting functionality. Um, but that's the hard part is we don't know, one, if this has ever been cut back before. Just that, you know, some people do maintenance cleaning on sewer lines to keep things at bay so they don't lead to a problem. Um, and or, you know, the way that roots are, one day there's no roots and the next day they find their way through. And sometimes we're finding these things not too long after they've been true to the sewer line where you're not going to get a huge big root in the line so anyway right in front of that you've got three rocks my dang paint can something sat on the nozzle and the gas leaked out of it so i my unfortunately my paint doesn't work but i snapped a photo and i moved a rock directly over the top of that if you're facing the house from the street you've got these three decent sized little rocks in front of that tree it's the middle rock and i'm gonna i'm gonna take my s pen and i'll draw over the picture so you have an idea right right where that is um, after any repairs are done, I recommend a rescope afterwards to check the work. It's very important to do that. Um, and you want to do that after the line is buried, not beforehand, or you're not going to catch any settling problems that may occur due to uncompacted soil. But it's a very, very good idea to rescope. 
And then as for the tree, I mean, my opinion on any tree that's really within about 10 feet of a sewer line is that you really don't want to have it there. Otherwise, what you end up doing is running the risk of a re-intrusion in the future. Especially, and, and in this case, it's so close to the tree that you may very well kill the tree um, cutting into the ground there. You're, you're going to probably have to cut through a decent amount of that root system in order to get to the to the sewer line. So, you know, if you can replant the thing because you love it, go for it. Otherwise, you don't want that anywhere near your sewer line there. <clears throat> As for the remainder of the sewer line, the concrete pipe is in fair condition for its age. Like I was saying before, most, if not the entirety of that section of pipe is in city territory. Um, and it's, as it sits right now, it's not problematic. It's not doing anything. Uh, and the remainder of the ABS pipe outside that spot there at 52 feet all looks good, clean. As it sits right now, the line has good flow of the main lateral. My concern is it won't remain that way if that spot there at 52 feet is not addressed. If no repairs are done for some reason... I would certainly rescope this line about nine months to a year after uh, taking occupancy. That's to get a baseline for how, how aggressively that root system grows and whether or not you need to be doing periodic root cutting uh, to keep things at bay until you're ready for repairs.